Most developers know about sample projects like Lyra and the Valley of the Ancients. But there's one project that despite having been around for over 10 years and constantly being updated, it seems almost nobody knows about it. It's an interactive exhibit that allows you to experience countless Unreal Engine features running in real time. And since all of the blueprints can be accessed, it allows you to easily recreate everything you see here in your own projects. In my opinion, making it the most valuable out of all sample projects. I want to start off strong with what I believe to be the most interesting map, which is the blueprint input examples. There is a 2D input example, and if we walk on here, we can control this 2D character. So it switches who we possess, and all of a sudden we possess this guy. And for example, you could do something like Mario Odyssey or the Plucky Squire, where you have 2D and 3D segments in your game. And to see how any of this works, we can just click the guy and on the right side, edit the blueprint. Like I said, all of the blueprints are exposed. And we can see that it just takes the move right input and adds the movement input. So it is using the character movement uh, component here. And yeah, it's just movement, it's jumping, um, a lot of very simple things and possession. Next up, we have this space shooter arcade machine. And if we step up here, you can see that we control a spaceship and with the left mouse button, um, we click it to shoot. And there's even enemies spawning, we have projectiles. So this is another very cool example. And you see it's much more advanced. You can see the static mesh is swaying left and right with the movement. And it is basically an entire game within a game. So if you have an open world game or an exploration game, you could have arcade machines. Um, and have a lot of mini games like this. And again, we can just see how does any of this work. And in this case, we can click this guy at the bottom here, this spaceship, and this is the game controller. And the entire game logic is happening inside of this. So we have a lot of variables here uh, with the player ship, uh, with these spawned enemies. So everything about this entire space shooter is being um, kept track of in this blueprint. And the last thing in this room I want to show is the physics driven movement example. So I step up here and we can control the spaceship. It has particle effects. It can fly up and down. And we even have this abduction ray and we can suck in objects. And yeah, so you could make an entire game just based on the spaceship or you could have an RC car in your game, like in the old GTA games, right? For maybe a, a mission, a side mission. The next thing I want to show off is the physical animation room. And this shows you how we can mix um, skeletal mesh animations with physics. So now we don't have any physics blended in, but I can move the slider and you can see um, the body starts to hunch down here. The upper part of the body is affected by physics. And on the right side, it's the lower part of the body, which is affected by physics. And you probably don't want to have everything be physics, but have a nice mix. And then maybe if you get shot with an arrow, if you get shot, um, with a bullet, you get this nice impact effect. And all of these settings can also be changed during runtime, as you can see here, to change which bones are affected to what degree. And again, you could make entire games, ragdoll style games, just um, based around this. The next map is the UI slate post buffer. And here we have some cool screen effects. For example, here, if we take damage, the screen gets all red and we know that we gotta heal or get out of the dangerous situation. And there's other effects like these wave effects, for example, the entire screen getting wavy. Maybe that's something you want to do uh, once you go into the water. And something else that's really cool is this VHS effect. So if you make a horror game, uh, this kind of found footage style, you can use this effect. And to find it again, very easily, we can just look here at the event demo blueprint. And here at the bottom, we can see the triggered actor class. So the widget VHS, we can just look for it in the folder. And then here you have the VHS effect folder. And here we have a couple of different materials and you're probably not gonna understand all of this. I don't understand all of this, but you could look at it little by little, right? But you could also just migrate this entire thing to your project. This widget, VHS widget, you could just right click asset actions and migrate it to your other project and just use it there. Next up is the physics map. And this allows you to play around with physics objects. And all of this is using chaos, the new physics engine of Unreal. So left clicking, I can just drag this, um, pick up the blocks. I can throw them around, nudge them around. We can also see a skeletal mesh that is kind of being made wobbly and simulates physics. Works a similar way. And you can also see physics constraints like this angular motor only allowing this block to move in a very certain way. And here we have a linear motor, again, just allowing this block to move in a certain way. And you could create hinges and other objects like this. Staying on the topic of physics, we have the physics cloth map. And you can see how the chaos cloth here interacts with the wind directional source, making it move around. 
and also what kind of properties we can set here to make them move in a different way to have them have more resistance or not. And we can also see the collision with the cloth being on a sphere here, but then also being attached to a moving skeletal mesh. And here we have self collision. On the right side, it's on, on the left side, it's off. And you can see on the right side, the result is, of course, much better, but it is also heavier to compute, and you will have to have different trade offs for that. And lastly, there's a character with a cloth based scarf attached to it. Next up is the math hall, which might sound like a nightmare to you, but if you slept through high school math like I did, this actually allows you to catch up easily on all the math that we need in games. It starts out with explaining what a vector is, it shows us one dimensional vectors, it shows two dimensional vectors, how we can calculate distances, and it even helps us visualize what a three dimensional vector looks like. And it also goes further, showing how we can calculate the dot product and it even visualizes it in an interactive manner. And the dot product is often used to check if you maybe are backstabbing somebody, if you're in the line of sight of somebody. And this just shows you that with a value of 1.0, yes, both vectors are aligned perfectly. And with minus one, they are the opposite. And this is just a nice way to visualize this and really understand what the dot product does. This example also used the dot product to show of how we can make this block glow green if the player is looking directly at it. And this is all being done inside of the materials only in this case. The animation basics map has a lot of things that seasoned developers will be familiar with, but if you're new to Unreal, this is a great place to start. It explains how root motion works, and this is something you'll often use for combat interactions, right? You see without root motion, the capsule that controls the character is just stuck in one place. And with root motion, we can move up the stairs properly and the capsule stays aligned. And especially for action games, this is extremely important. It also shows how we can have additive animations. So you can see that we have a get hit effect on top of the idle, and then we have the same get hit effect on top of the run animation. Another cool thing is the aim offset, and you can see here the character points up or down depending on the aim offset. And for third person shooters, this is very important. And again, it works for the same idle and for the walk animation as well. And next up is the paper 2D map. So this allows us to use sprites, flipbooks, and these kind of 2D animations in Unreal. And it covers a lot of the basics, like the sprite color that can be changed, how we can adjust the collision for different sprites. And the coolest thing about this is that it uses the sprite of Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 to show off all of these different things. And here it shows how we can use the frame run to not just play the animation at the same speed, but to give certain frames more weight by having them linger on for longer. And another cool thing are the 2D physics. So you can see we could totally make a game like Suica game or the watermelon game using 2D sprites like this. And if I exit out, you can see that there's two radial forces at the bottom that constantly push these upward. And we can also look at one of these sprites and we can simply look for constraint. And you can see here on the physics mode, it uses the X, Z plane constraint to make sure that the sprites can only go left and right, but they don't go in the background. And you can also see we have a blocking volume here. And if I just move this out of the way and start the game again, you can see that these sprites are going to fall out of this area. <laughs> and yeah, like I said, it can be a lot of fun to just play around with this, look at the blueprints, look at the different settings and how all of these things play together. And there's so many more maps here, much more that I can possibly cover in this video. And if you want to explore this by yourself, it's available on FAB, which is the new Unreal Engine Marketplace. You can just search for content examples, but I'll also put a link in the description. Let me know in the comments which map or example is your favorite. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe to get more videos like this. And that's it for this video. As always, thanks to my awesome patrons for supporting this channel.